In this lecture, I will discuss about password authentication and password cracking. In this lecture, we are going to explore different authentication mechanism. An authentication mechanism or method is a way for you to prove that you are allowed to access something. Password have been the default method of authentication for as long as most of us have needed to prove to a computer that we are allowed to access it. However, password are not the only authentication mechanism. There are some authentication methods are there. Number one, something you know. Example of this are your good old password bank card pin or a safe word when the alarm company calls your home. These are all example of using something you know to authenticate yourself. Something you have. Examples are swipe card to access a secure area, a code sent to your cell phone as part of a login process to prove you have your cell phone or a secure ID token that provides a constantly changing code you need to enter to login access. All are something you have that can be used to authenticate yourself. Something you are. This is where biometric security comes in. To access our data center, we have to put our index fin finger on a fingerprint scanner after swiping a card. Unless you steal someone's index finger, you won't be able to access our data center even if you have stolen a valid swipe card. Other biometric system include retinal scan, the blood vessels at the back of the eye and iris scan the color part of the eye. Other attribute used for authentication? A few other attributes that you occasionally see used for authentication. Somewhere you are, something you can do, something you exhibit, something you know. Our focus in this session is passwords. Most of us see them as a, an inconvenience, something you have to tolerate, to be able to use a service you need access to. In this session, we are going to explain how computer system have evolved in the way they process your password, how modern online applications do authentication and why it is important to choose a strong password. Once you finish this session, you should have a knowledge of hashing algorithm, how password cracking works and what strong password really means. There are different types of password are there. In the early days of computer and mainframes, password were stored in a database as plain text. When you wanted to sign in a gatekeeper application would ask you for your password. It would take whatever you typed in and check if it was equal to whatever it had stored in the database. And if true, you were granted access. As the internet evolved and grew, malicious hackers started gaining unauthorized access to the system. Once they were in, they would immediately download the plain text password database and have instant access to all user password. Developers and system administrator needed to come up with a solution to this problem and the solution they came up with was password hashing. So now we will discuss about password hashing. Think of a hashing algorithm as a machine. In one end, you input any text or binary data. Out the other end, you get a number that is a certain length 
let's say 32 digits long the data you feed it can be any size from a few bytes to many terabytes or larger no matter what data you feed in you get a 32 digit number that uniquely represent the data what is amazing about a hashing algorithm mechanism is that if you feed something identical in you get the same 32 digit number if you feed in where and piece you get a number if you copy the book and feed it exactly the same text you get the same number if you change a single character in the novel you will get a completely different number hashing algorithms differ in the way they work and the most notable difference is the length of the number each one splits out md5 is there which is extremely popular split out 128 binary digits sha2 split are there 256 bit when system administrator and developer first encountered the security problem with password database that stored as plain text they turned to hashing algorithms for help what they came up with is instead of storing your password in a database they would just store a hash of your password that is the number that a hashing algorithm generates when it operates on your password. When a user changes their password or when a user account is created, the new password is typed in for the first time. The computer security application takes that password and run it through a hashing algorithm and store the resulting number in a database. The next time you try to sign in and enter your password, the security system runs the password you entered through the same hashing algorithm and check if the resulting hash matches, then you are allowed to access the account. No longer are passwords stored in clear text in a database. If a hacker steals the user account database, they don't automatically have all password. All they have is a list of hashes. So storing hashes of password instead of password themselves was a major breakthrough in information security. The story unfortunately does not end here. Now that hashes are commonly used to authenticate user instead of plain text password, a hacker does not immediately have a list of all passwords when they steal the user accounts database. However, there is a way for a hacker to steal hashes and turn them back into passwords. The method is relatively simple. When a hacker steal a database of hashes passwords to reverse engineer the hashes, convert them back to password, the hacker generates hashes from a dictionary of word he think might be the password that were used. If any of those hashes match with he has in the database, he has managed to reverse engineer a hash and now knows what the original password is. For example, let's say you have stolen a password database and you have the hash of the password that Merck uses. You want to know the actual password for the Merck account. So you take the word banana and run it through the same hashing algorithm that the password database use. You end up with a number and if the number matches the hashes in the password database for user Merck, you now know his password. If it doesn't match, then I try peer and apple and apple peer 435 and progressively more words and more complex word combinations. So to crack a password, you need to take a very large dictionary of passwords and hashes. Each of them 
then compare those hashes to what is in the password database you store and when you get a match you know the original password the problem is that generating hashes of words takes time each word might take a few milliseconds to hash so we need a very fast computer to do this or alternatively you can take a very large dictionary of well known passwords generate hashes from all the word and store the word and their hashes then every time you steal a password database you can just reuse that list of word and their hashes you don't need to recreate the hashes every time all you need to do is match your list of hashes with hashes in the password database and where you get a match you have cracked the password alternatively you can also create your own password by using a programming or a predefined tool what you have just described is called a rainbow table rainbow table are a method commonly used by hackers to crack password databases that use ordinary hashing without any additional security the rainbow table attack on hashes password database are very effective because they are fast to help protect against this kinds of attacks developer and system administrator came up with a technique called salting password so now we will discuss about how salt works a rainbow table attack relies on a hacker being able to take a dictionary and pre-computed hashes of the words in that dictionary and compare those hashes to the hashes in a password database to defeat rainbow tables the information security community invented salted hashes the concept is relatively simple when you create a new password instead of just running the password on its own through a hashing algorithm you do the following generate a random little piece of text code the text at the beginning of the password then run the combination of the little piece of text and the password through a hashing algorithm then you store the little piece of text as plain text and the resulting hash that little piece of text is called a salt when someone wants to sign in they type their password the security application takes the store piece of text or salt puts it at the front of the password that was entered and runs it through the same hashing algorithm to get a hash it compares the resulting hash with the hash stored in the database and if they match you are granted access it important to note that the salt or little piece of text is stored as plain text with the hash it's also important to note that the salt is random for each password in other words every password has its own special little piece of text this is a relatively simple concept but it makes crack cracking hashed passwords significantly more difficult so now the question is that why salt makes cracking more difficult recall the rainbow table are a dictionary of word and the hashes of those word in the above example we use salt the little piece of text combine with our password to generate hashes if a hacker wants to crack passwords he can't use his rainbow table because the rainbow table is just a hash of individual words he needs to combine those word with the stored salt to get the actual hash that is stored in the database that makes cracking password much harder because it means a hacker's rainbow table is useless and it forces him to recompute hashes for every word in his dictionary here is 
an example of a password being created for someone called a good guy. The system administrator create a new account on the system for user called good guy with the password apple. The system automatically generate a short piece of text YRTZT. The system takes the short text and combines it with Apple to create the text YRTZDAPPLE. It then runs YRTZDAPPLE through a hashing algorithm and end up with a 128-bit number. The system stored that number as the hashed password for that particular account. So when that person arrives at work and tries to sign in, he types in Apple as his password. The system retrieves the record for the for that particular account, that record is a hash and the text YRTZT, which is a salt. The system combines the word Apple that the person just typed in with the salt to make the text YRTZTAPPLE and runs a hashing algorithm on that. The system checks to see if the has it retrieve matches that has it just generated it does match and it allows the person to access the system here are the some steps a hacker takes to crack the salted password a hacker arrives and managed to hack into the system and he steal the database of password hashes and salts. The hacker tries to use pre-computed hashes of word in his English dictionary. One of the hashes is of the word apple, but that does not work because the hacker needs to combine the salt, which is YRTZT with the word apple before he hashes it. The hacker realizes his pre-computed rainbow table is useless. He needs to combine the salt for that particular password with the every word in his dictionary and then see which has his matches. That means he needs to recalculate hashes for his entire dictionary which is going to take significantly longer. As you can see from the above example, it is possible to crack passwords that use salts. It just takes much longer and requires more processing time. Hashed password that use salts are what most modern authentication system use. It because it forces a hacker to hash every password that they want to guess. You now have a working knowledge of how modern password authentication work on systems like WordPress, Linux, Windows and many other systems. You also understand why salt are useful because they prevent a hacker from very quickly cracking password hash by hashes by using rainbow tables. Now that you understand the benefit of salted hashes it may seems obvious to you that everyone should use them when building authentication system unfortunately they don't there are many example of custom built web application out there that did not use salts they just use plain old hashes and when they are hacked it is relatively easy to reverse engineer the password hash using rainbow table now, why strong password are important? If one of the services you use is compromised and hashes, hashed password are stolen, even a teenager in his bedroom with a gaming PC under only $2,000 can try to turn your hashed password into a plain text password 
at a rate of 3.2 million cases per second and possibly much faster. When you consider that eHarmony, LinkedIn, Google and many other well-known brands have been successfully hacked over the past few years, it is quite likely that a service you use will have its hashed password stolen sometime in the near future. This means that it is important to use passwords that are very difficult to crack. Any password with less than 12 character is weak and also use uppercase, lowercase, special character and numbers. Now we will discuss about some important password cracking technique used by hackers. Number one, dictionary attack. The dictionary attack uses a simple file containing words that can be found in a dictionary. Hence, it is rather straightforward name. In other words, this attack uses exactly the kind of words that many people use as their password. Cleverly grouping words together such as Super administrator guy, administrator, maybe admin, or NPTEL 2019 will not prevent your password from being cracked this way. Well, not for more than a few extra seconds. Number two, brute force attack. Similar to the dictionary attack, the brute force attack comes with an added bonus for the hacker. Instead of simply using words, a brute force attack lets them detect non-dictionary word by working through all possible alphanumeric combinations from AAA1 to ZZZ10. It is not quick, provided your password is over a handful of characters long, but it will uncover your password eventually. Boot for setup can be shortened by throwing additional computing horsepower in terms of both processing power, including harnessing the power of your video card, that is GPU, and machine numbers, such as using the distributed computing model like online Bitcoin miners. Number three, rainbow table attack. A rainbow table are not as colorful as their name may imply, but for a hacker, your password could well be at the end of it. In the most straightforward way possible, you can boil a, a rainbow table down into a list of pre-computed hashes. The numerical value used when en encrypting a password, this table contains hashes of all possible password combination for any given hashing algorithm. Rainbow table are attractive as it reduces the time needed to crack a password hashes to simply just looking something up in a list. However, rainbow tables are huge, widely used, they require serious computing power to run and the table becomes useless if the hashes it is trying to find has been salted but the addition of random characters to its password ahead of hashing the algorithm there is talk of salted rainbow table exciting but this would be so large as to be difficult to use practice, they would likely only work with a predefined random character set and password string below 12 characters facing. There is an easy way to hack. Ask the user for his or her password. A phishing email leads the unsuspecting reader to a fake login page 
associated with whatever service it is the hacker wants to access requesting the user to put right some terrible problem with the with the security that page then skims their password and the hacker can go use it for their own purpose why bother going to the uh, trouble of cracking the password when the user will happily give it to you anyway then number 5 social engineering social engineering takes the whole as the user concept outside of the inbox that phishing tends to stick with and into the real world a favorite of the social engineering is to call an office post, uh, posing as an it security tech guy and simply ask for the network access password you had be amazed at how often this works some even have the necessary things to do a suit and name badge before walking into a business to ask the receptionist the same question face to face number 6 malware a keylogger or screen scraper can be installed by malware which record everything you type or take screenshot during a login process and then forward a copy of this file to hacker central some malware will look for the existence of a web browser client password file and copy this which useless properly encrypted will contain easily accessible saved password from the user's browsing history number 7 offline cracking it is easy to imagine that password are safe when the system they protect lock out users after 3 or 4 wrong guesses blocking automated guessing passwords applications well what would be true if it were not for the fact that most password hacking takes place offline using a set of hashes in a password file that has been obtained from a compromised system often the target in question has been compromised via a hack on a third party which then provides access to the system servers and those all important user password hashes file the password cracker can then take as long as they need to try and crack the code without altering the target system or individual user shoulder surfing the most confident of hackers will take the case of a parcel courier air con service technician or anything else that gets them access to an office building once they are in the service personal uniform provides a kind of free pass to wander around in the hidden areas and make note of passwords being entered by genuine numbers of staff it also provides an excellent opportunity to eyeball all these post it not stuck to the front of lcd screens with login scrabble upon them number 9 spidering savvy hackers have realized that many corporate password are made up of words that are connected to the business itself studying corporate literature website sales material and even the website of competitors and listed customers can provide the ammunition to build a custom word list to use in a brute force attack really savvy hackers have automated the process and let a spidering application similar to those employed by leading search engines to identify keywords collect and and create the list for them number 10 guesses the password crackers best friend of course is the predictability of the user unless a truly random password has been 
created using software dedicated to the task, a user generated random password is unlikely to be anything of the sort. Now I will show you how to perform dictionary attack. Now suppose our target is 192.168.0.51 Now let's use the tool nmap to find out which services is running on that particular system. Let's wait for the result. Okay, here is the result. Port 22 TCP is open and SSI service is running. Port 23 TCP port is open, telnet service is running. Port 80 is also open HTTP service is running port 443 TCP port is also open and HTTPS service is running and host name possibly VYOS and operating system is Linux and device is router okay let's try to connect with SSH service using the uh, host name VIOS it asking for password So I'm putting password as admin. Permission denied. Please try again. Okay. So actually I don't know the password. So to break this password, we can perform a dictionary attack. So to perform a dictionary attack, first we need a dictionary. So you can use any uh, pre-stored dictionary. Otherwise, you can also use the tool crunch to create your own dictionary. Here, I am using the tool crunch to create my own dictionary. Crunch, the tool name, then minimum length of the password. So, suppose I am uh, considered minimum length of password is 4 and maximum length of password I'm considering maximum length as four and the character from where it basically create the password. So I'm considering O S V Y. And then store this in the folder root my file and file name is pass.txt so crunch will uh, now generate the uh, password it's total 256 password are there it's basically uh, store all possible combination created by uh, osvy so now our dictionary is ready. So now I can use this dictionary uh, to perform a dictionary attack over SSH service. So to perform the dictionary attack, now I am using the tool Hydra. Hydra, then uh, you can use as capital L to provide the 
username so i am using the same dictionary for username and password so it's under root then my file then pass dot txt and then dash capital p to provide the dictionary it's also under root then my file then pass dot txt and then the IP address 192.168.0.51 and the service is SSH. Uh, attacking SSH. So it basically try with the uh, all possible user ID and password which is stored inside the dictionary pass.txt. Now suppose I know the user ID. So in that case, only use dash small l to specify the user ID. So Hydra dash l gyos. Uh, this is the user name. Then dash capital P and provide the dictionary an IP address and the service name Okay, we got the user ID, uh, login name is VYUS and password is also VYUS. So we got the password VYUS. Now use this password to login into that particular system using SSH service. SSH, then username VYUS at the red IP address 192.168.0.51 and welcome to VYOS and it asking for the password password is also VYOS okay now successfully able to penetrate inside the system 192.168.0.51 in next session, I will show you how to crack the password using phishing attack. So Hydra is one of the tool which we can use to break the password by using the dictionary attack. Some other tool is also there like ncrack Medusa. So you can use any of the tool to attack in a services which is running in the victim machine thank you